listen to him. He knows everything. Uh, the FTSE 100 is uh, closing at a record high. That means the economy is doing tremendously well. Uh, no, no, not really. No. Uh, everywhere you look, no green shoots. The Institute of Fiscal Studies said we have the worst productivity growth uh, in this country since the Second World War. We're all doing very badly, and we should be punished. Uh, not since the Second World War has output per hour grown as slowly over a six-year period prior to the uh, financial crisis. This is according to the report's analysis of the Bank of England data. In other words, uh, this is a report written by experts based on facts therefore nobody is remotely interested. Correct. The Institute of Fiscal Studies says it looks like we will face a substantial deterioration in the projected state of public finances. Oh, no! Which I think uh, means uh, is, uh, you know, um, uh, economists to speak for West Screwed. And one of our biggest industries, that's gone down too. I mean, I, I'm going to hit you with all the bad news first, and then we can start uh, talking about, uh, oh, I don't know, does any uh, subject uh, spring to mind? How about sex? Disgusting. Okay, then. Confidence in Britain's car industry is uh, dented, as industry figures have revealed another cut in sales forecasts. The Daily Telegraph understands that the fall in demand for new vehicles is accelerating and will trigger a further downward, uh, a downgrade rather, to the Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders' market predictions. In other words, they're, they're screwed. <laughs> if the car business is uh, screwed and therefore uh, we're screwed. If the world uh, stops its uh, or uh, decreases its desire for weapons of mass destruction, which is our other uh, big business, then, then uh, we, we might as well just put a for sale sign up on the country. Fortunately, that doesn't look like happening anytime soon. Not with uh, you know who in the White House. I'll bring us into war. Exactly. Um, motor dealers have warned that drivers are backing away from buying cars as uncertainty over the B word and fears about uh, rising inflation have put people off for making big ticket purchases uh, or, or rather any big ticket purchase that, is, that doesn't come in the form of a phone with an apple on the back of it you people are out of your mind queuing for a thousand pound phone unless they're advertising with us in which case it is a super gift for Christmas get two you're worth it Buyers' uh, reticence of uh, d buying a new car has driven down prices and cut into margins. With uh, one of the uh, UK's uh, largest dealers, Pendragon, issuing a profit warning as a result. They said, uh, profit... Warning! Warning! The expected downgrade comes days after official data on UK car production showed a collapse in demand. Well, it's about blooming time. Stop buying stuff you don't need with money you haven't got. Crying out loud. I mean, I know it's what uh, makes our economy go around. But we have to correct our uh, behaviour at some point. Behaviour needs to be corrected. Why doesn't that work? Corrected. There it is. That button there is, is reticent. It needs to be corrected. There it is. Whew. Speaking of... Oh, well, just on the subject of cars, by the way, um, it occurred to me as I was uh, driving in today that um, every single other person on the road is a moron. I think you'll find that that's correct. And it's not um, uh, just uh, people who uh, don't drive for a living. And it's not people who uh, drive uh, minicabs for a living. It's black cab drivers too. I was um, uh, driving along, minding my own affairs, da -da 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 -da, through a 20 mile an hour zone, and you go past an illuminated sign that says 20, slow down. And then you go past a static sign on the side of the road that has the number 20 written on it. And then you go past a sign that's written on the road itself in huge six foot letters, the number 20, meaning 20 miles an hour is how fast you're supposed to be driving. Affirmative. And there's a speed camera there, right by the sign that says 20. And who is tailgating me and flashing me to go through the speed camera faster than 20? A black cab driver. Except it wasn't a black cab, it was a grey cab. AE07, I can't remember what the rest of the number plate was. You, sir, should not be driving. You are, um, uh, you're too aggressive and you don't know what you're doing. 
Anyway, I got that off my chest. Whew. Not often do you get tailgated and flashed by a cab driver, a black cab driver. That's uh, that is infrequent. And I'll assume that he was just you know your regular uh, average uh, everyday moron. Maybe he'd stolen the car. I have no idea. But uh, as is often the case with um, incidents of uh, road rage, I wanted to actually kill him. Would that? And I suppose that would make me the bad guy. Anyway, let's talk about sex, baby. Sir Michael Fallon, <coughs> forced to resign as Defence Secretary, partly because he was accused of behaving inappropriately towards Andrea led someone. What? And, um, and that should be a lesson to us all. It's not just the young and the good-looking that can be subject to harassment. Andrea Leadsom is reported to have uh, objected to lewd remarks he made at a parliamentary meeting six years ago. When Leadsom complained of cold hands, a Fallon allegedly replied, I know somewhere you can put them to warm up. Well, could be anywhere. Gloves? In front of a fire? Up your jumper? Uh, uh, allies of the former defence secretary said he fundamentally denied making such a comment. Is that it? Ledsom is also said to have complained of a unwanted physical contact, contact, including Fallon placing an arm around her. Around her what? Oh, around her. Is that it? You get fired. From the highest offices of state for being accused of making an off-colour joke and putting your clothed arm round someone's clothed shoulder. If that's the new standard, then every other man on earth and a considerable percentage of women are about to be fired. Ledsom says the key yardstick must be how those on the receiving end were made to feel. And when I read that, I thought... Oh, no! Yeah. I thought, oh, no. She said, I have been clear that the issue is around, first, those who are made to feel uncomfortable. I read that wrong. She said, I've been clear that the issue is around, first, those who are made to feel uncomfortable. I am setting the bar significantly below criminal activity. If people are made to feel uncomfortable, that is not correct, says Andrea Ledsom. She says, in terms of the consequences for the perpetrators, I have also been clear that staff uh, could forfeit their jobs, members of parliament could have the whip withdrawn, and ministers could be fired from ministerial office. For someone else taking offence at something that would not raise an eyebrow from someone else. Again, we're not talking about any, uh, any, anything uh, criminal here. You know, comedians have been saying uh, that they feel frustrated uh, for quite a while now, and I've, I've seen quite a lot of comedians on television um, com complaining, essentially, that the, the ability to apply their craft has just gone. You really can't say anything these days without someone taking offence and making it all about them, which I think is a lot of what this taking offence stuff actually is. People on the edge of their seats, desperate to take events, so that the spotlight can be swiveled on them. They feel uh, attended to. It's a demand for attention. Criminal activity is one thing, but this is getting ridiculous. If the standard now is that you must not offend anyone at any time, then all modern music will have to go because that's the devil's music it encourages fornication outside of wedlock and has a moral outlook that is not pure all modern music should go and films of course almost all films should be taken out of the cinema the swearing and the sex and the violence that's all out it's all offensive as is pretty much everything on television that is not the antiques roadshow Art galleries, of course, will have to be cleansed. All that nudity is not acceptable to some people. And we'd also better get started on book burning. Because the world of literature is a festering den of vice. There's no end of offence that can be had inside the pages of books. 
So Sir Michael <coughs> stepped down on Wednesday night, admitted that his behaviour had sometimes fallen short of the high standards expected <laughs> expected of the military personnel that it was his job to oversee. <laughs> <laughs> military personnel high standards of behavior you'd have to go to a building site to hear worse language than on an army base and the military isn't exactly a bastion of sexual equality is it your average squaddy is not a reconstructed feminist and before he stepped down the only allegation that had been made public was the claim that he had behaved inappropriately to the journalist Julia Hartley Brewer 15 years ago by uh, placing his hand on her knee which she wasn't uh, remotely bothered about as far as I could tell I think that I think that's pretty pretty much what she said former cabinet uh, cabinet colleagues uh, suggested that the incident in 2002 was not an isolated one and the defense secretary's behavior towards women could sometimes become inappropriate after he had been drinking alcohol well, guess what? Everybody's behaviour towards everyone can become inappropriate after they have been drinking alcohol. That's what alcohol does. It's an enabler. Ban alcohol is the answer to that. Who's with me? No, I thought not. And what of the aggrieved Andrea Leadsom? You'll, you'll recall that she stood against Theresa May for the party leadership, Andrea Leadsom, before her campaign went wonky, after she appeared to suggest that being a mother would make her a better Prime Minister than Theresa May. Well, speaking as a non-mother, I find that offensive. That makes me feel uncomfortable. And, as Andrea Leadsom said, that is not correct. So I will look forward to reading her resignation first thing in the morning. You've made me feel uncomfortable, Andrea Leadsom. Your rules, you've got to go. And then we had the sight of grizzled newsmen going into a Victorian fainting fit over some off-colour joke and the press writing about the revelations of sexual impropriety as though it's all a complete shock and how outraged they are. Well, I think they doth protest too much. I mean, the idea that no one uh, knew about Harvey Weinstein or that such behaviour is unheard of in the pure and pristine safest milk corridors of the nation's press is laughable. Have you ever heard news people talk? They're about as filthy as you can get. And they aren't exactly bastions of equality either. The news media is run by old men who think in old men terms. I'd like to see what newspapers have swept under the carpet as far as sexual abuse and promotion for favours go. And we've got an inkling of what goes on in news organisations from Rupert Murdoch's Fox News in America. Just do an internet search on Fox News sex scandals and pre prepare to be stunned for a very long time. And what about the other industries? All those macho businesses like lawyers' offices and accounting firms and banks. Banks! We haven't even got, got to banks yet. Probably the least female-friendly environment outside of a rugby club. People seem, to, people seem to think that we are uh, at the start of a revolution in how these sexes are treated. That from now on, now that it's all out in the open, all that abuse will stop. And if you believe that, I have a second-hand, slightly used firework I'd like to sell you. And of course, that, none, none of this uh, it mentions the one business that has so far been given a pass. Despite the fact that it seems to be preeminent in the field of sex abuse. The religion business! They're still running schools, you know. OK, let's have uh, a call in Lewisham. Hello, Hannah. Oh, hello there. Hello there. Yeah, what the hell is the matter with you, Nick Abbott? Oh, well, where, where do we even begin? Yeah, I mean, you, uh, you almost disgust me, actually, this evening. Oh, no. I, I usually oh, like your banter. Oh, already? Oh, yeah, already, mate, yeah. Um, you know very well that, um, uh, uh, you, you know well enough that Fallon did not uh, specifically, and I mean specifically, did not mean for her Ledson's hands to warm up uh, up his jumper or anywhere else. Well, apart I don't, from I, one I, I don't, apart from I, one area. I, I, don't, I don't know 
anything of the sort, and neither do you. No, you choose. You choose to be blind. You choose to be no, blind. No, Hannah, you, you don't know what he meant any more than I do. You choose. Were you there? You choose. Were you there? If somebody is being lewd... Were you there? Respect a woman to realise that somebody is being lewd to them. OK, and all right, OK, point, all right, wait, the wait a minute. I want to... Hang on a minute. No, you hang on a minute. OK, let's just assume that it was uh, a lewd remark. So what? What difference does it make? Okay. What do you mean, so what? I mean, so what? They're both grown-ups. They're in Parliament, for crying out loud. They're lawmakers. It's the point I was going to make. The further point I was going to make was that he said this lewd remark yeah. um, uh, to, to a, 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 an MP uh, of equal uh, seniority to him, OK? Uh, imagine what, what, him. That, that because, because, make because, hang on, any and hang on. Let me finish. Whether, whether Look, I know you're in charge of the buttons not. there. I know you're in charge of the buttons. Please let me make my point. I thought you had. So, no. So he's saying this. He's, he's making this lewd remark uh, to uh, equally senior. Uh, yes, now uh, you're just uh, repeating yourself. Okay, okay. Imagine him doing that to a 19-year-old, a 20-year-old, a 22. Well, and well, I you can, could say, I can, imagine him shooting someone in the street. The, these are things you're just making up now, Hannah. I am not making up. He would not have resigned if he was not an, a habitually lewd man to a, every woman, any woman in his in in his uh, uh, sphere of uh, circumstance. Well, again, you're just making it up because you don't know. Well, that's why he resigned. I'm making it up, and he's resigned. No, he's. You he, are. In, you are. Again, in you, you, no, yeah, you if in I'm in denial, then you're just making up things, Hannah. You don't know what the situation with him is. You've got no idea about his history or his behaviour around anybody. You, uh, you seem to be uh, one of the, the people that I was talking about before that were on the edge of your seat, ready to, to scream and shout and, and make it about you. And, um... <sighs> I think this uh, this obsession with um, with the shooting people down now for any perceived uh, impropriety is is not doing anybody any favours because it actually obfuscates what is um, the the more important issue. I mean, Harvey Weinstein hasn't even been arrested yet. That's perhaps one of the uh, th things that is a little bit more important than somebody who said something stupid uh, in um, a, a moment of a drunkenness. Or even if it wasn't drunk, it doesn't really, really make any difference. Le you're going to have to get fired if, you're, if you've ever made a lewd comment now. So that means everybody is going to have to be fired because everybody has said something off-colour at some point in their lives to somebody. Even you, Hannah. <laughs> You know, women have it difficult enough in every sphere and in every single profession, okay? And I, you know, I love your banter, but I don't like what, the, what you're doing this evening. You are undermining no, the position no, that, of women. It's, it's the, the opposite way around, Hannah. <sighs> no. If men can take um, off-colour banter, then women should be able to take it too. I mean, we're not talking about shrinking violets here. We're not talking about children. She was, um, I don't know what her history before going into Parliament is, but she's a grown-up. She's got plenty of money. She's got plenty of experience in life. And it's the sort of thing you can shrug off. If women are going to pretend that they need to be wrapped up in a cotton wool like a child just in order to function in the modern world, then they're not doing themselves any good. I mean, people are rude all the time. Every time they, people get into a car, they, t they turn in they're from... Uh, uh, they, they, it's like a Jekyll and Hyde personality. Every time people leave their house, queuing up for the um, checkout till at the supermarket, people are rude and boorish and throw insults. That's just part of life. To get ahead, you just... you have to um, deal with it. And dealing with it is not insisting that everybody that says something stupid uh, has to be a mar uh, has to be frog marched from the building. That's just ridiculous. I mean, it does imply that women, uh, if uh, if what you say is right, Hannah, that, that women are not uh, suitable or, or suited rather to a modern work environment, because <laughs> we can want uh, and wish for it all we like, but uh, men aren't going to change. 
I mean, if you think that this, uh, th these uh, revelations are going to uh, affect a uh, change in human behavior, then uh, you're deluded. Of course not. There'll be um, a, a, a fuss will be made in certain businesses and others will uh, get a pass. You know, banking will, will probably get away with it and the religion business will probably get away with it and uh, sports and, you know, there, there, there'll be a few, like the entertainment business and, um, and uh, politics, maybe. And there'll be a few heads uh, that will roll and within a week, everybody will be back doing what they were before. Because people don't change. I mean, if you're 50, 60 years old, 70 years old, you don't change your behaviour based on um, some uh, new rule that's been uh, written down and uh, handed uh, around. Your, your your new code of behaviour. People don't change. So either you just have to... Oh, I don't know. You just have to... Again, we're not talking about, I'm not talking about criminal, criminality here, not criminal behaviour, but this is just how people are. And if you are um, so delicate that you have to be uh, protected from the modern world, then I don't know what to tell you. you then you aren't suitable for a business. But most women are. Do not need protecting from the modern world. Can give it just as, uh, as um, good as they, can, uh, as they receive it. Is that um, Sorry, is no. that is that explanation what enough? What's she going to do? Kick him in the right area rather than put put her no, out? No. Okay. So no. But you have, going straight from uh, insults to violence or, or or a lewd comment to violence it isn't helping uh, either. You see these you. I, it kind of is just depressing, really. Everybody just goes straight to the extreme these days. There's nothing in the middle. Oh, I have been offended. Therefore, you must be fired. There is, there is, there is no uh, in between at all. Everybody, is, everything is either black or white. There is no grey, and it's kind of wearying. I mean, aren't we? I, I feel that this is a period in time that we're going through, and we'll come out the other side, and we'll look back and think, oh, boy, that was strange. <laughs> what the hell was all that about? This period of extremes. I mean, I hope so, because it's getting a bit wearing. Not all men are rapists, and not all uh, lewd comments should result in that person being fired. Come on. There are idiots everywhere. I mean, every time I get in my car, I see uh, some moron doing something fantastically stupid, but it doesn't mean to say that I, n I never want to leave my house again. If you want to uh, take part in the modern world, you've got to deal with idiots. They're everywhere. You can't just uh, shut yourself away and demand that they all disappear. Because they won't. They'll still be there. You'll be waiting for the rest of your life, Hannah. Anyway, thanks a lot. Um, appreciate the call. What's he got to be depressed about? This, uh, the, the extremes that the, the, there seems to be... Um, I don't know, we've, we seem to be gripped by the notion that everything is either black or white. It's either yes or no, and there is nothing in between. You know, we heard on the news about uh, some uh, man who'd been uh, accused of uh, serious uh, sexual allegations. A, ser uh, a serial abuser he has been uh, uh, alleged to be. But we seem to be making the same kind of noise about that as somebody who makes an off-colour joke in the office. There's just no sense of perspective anymore. Everybody goes from naught to crazy in six seconds or less. I mean, how about the, um, the, the leader of the free world, for instance? I cherish women. Yeah, with both hands. Apparently he gets a pass. Uh, Woodford, low Tony. Hi, hi, Nick. Yeah, I've been trying to get my head around this, Nick, uh, since I heard about Sir Michael Fallon. I mean, you know, what has he done that's so terrible wants him resigning or being pushed to resign. You know, I mean, Julia Hartley Brewer said that he, he put his hand on her knees two or, two or three times and she said, you do it one more time and I'll slap you around the face. Right. So she, she shook it off. But for Andrea Lenson to come out six years after the event to say how lewd he was, I mean, it seems as if there's like a feeding frenzy in the, there in the uh, politics at the moment. Yeah. It just seems bizarre that a man... You know, 
he may be a, perhaps a little bit lecherous or I don't know but is has he done, is he in the same league as Harvey Weinstein or well Harvey Weinstein is uh, innocent until proven guilty but um, le- but no <laughs> it, there, well, the allegations aren't in the uh, same league as Harvey Weinstein no I mean, but like in this said, febrile atmosphere, it seems like, um, it, it, I think the, the term feeding frenzy is quite right. It's uh, like when you uh, put uh, blood in the water and sharks just go uh, into a, uh, like a, a crazy, uh, mad rush for, for uh, food. And that seems to be what's happening now. And that the press are writing this up as though, gosh, we're all so surprised. We, we've never heard anything like it. We're so stunned. I've been saying on this show what the, what it's like in the uh, in the Palace of Westminster for years, based on one evening there, and uh, over and over and over again, uh, I've been uh, saying it how it was uh, virtually a bacchanalian orgy in there, p- drunken people staggering about, older men being uh, propped up by their uh, youthful, good-looking assistants. I couldn't believe how in your face and obvious it all it all was, and I've been saying it again and again, based on just a few hours in there. So these journalists who've spent uh, decades covering the uh, palace they know what goes on and then the, the notion that they're surprised and shocked by this is just comical well do you think that there, there's more to come about mr oh, fallon well there's more to come about a, a, a vast list of names there's going to be name after name after name because that's just what people are like people say stupid things when they're drunk and if they've got subsidized uh, beer and wine in the palace of westminster they're going to be taking a lot of it uh, it's the best club probably in the world um and and so um every name that you've ever heard of will be guilty in some uh, shape or form but it does this fury about what seems to be um just ordinary average boorish behavior does rather uh, obfuscate and take the eye off the more serious issues which are actual sexual uh, assaults which we should be uh, concentrating on not some stupid thing that some drunken bloke said 20 years ago I mean, listening to that Hannah, your last your last guest that was speaking. I mean, she'd done nothing to pro- to promote equality for women. I mean, you know, not all women are pathetic and 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 really crack up over some guy saying some lewd remark. I just, you know, women well, women are quite capable of looking after themselves, aren't they? They should be if they yeah, are they in should. business, because business is not a nice place. Business people aren't nice. You do not get ahead in this world by being nice. So you either are uh, capable uh, as a a person in business or in politics or whatever it might be, or you aren't. I I think you've got to pick one. Nick, all I can say is keep pushing that button with the whip cracking because, uh, you know, that's lewd and and I'll be reporting you tomorrow. (laughs) Well... But it's it's only lewd in your mind, Tony, and anybody else's Absolutely. mind. It's uh, it's just a a mode of correction. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> in fact, it's uh, it's the sort of thing that you would get if you had a lewd thought in school, or at least the school that I went to, anyway. All right, thanks a lot, mate. Uh, Cliff says uh, on the subject of offensive idiots, wasn't it funny that somebody closed down Donald Trump's Twitter account momentarily? Shame they couldn't locate the off switch to his mouth and solve the problem at source. Happy days. Yes. Donald Trump's Twitter account went down. <laughs> I'll get into that in a while. Um, I, I, every time I open up Twitter, it's kind of depressing. I, I've mistakenly uh, added Donald Trump, but also his... There's a feed, I think it's the Washington Post put together, a feed of what he retweets. God, that man is never off Twitter. My entire Twitter feed is full of either the things that he has written himself or other things that he has retweeted. How can anybody have that much time that isn't actually unemployed? It's staggering. Pretty much everything that Fox News puts out, he retweets. Anything that mentions his name that is in any way complimentary, he retweets. He must be on it 24 hours a day. Sitting on the golden throne, just waiting for uh, his uh, name to come up. Tottenham, hello Stephen. (laughs) You made me laugh, sorry. Now, I'm going to put my head above the parapet once Uh-oh. more. Uh-oh. Don't do it. Yeah. Uh, my grandmother would have said, this is all a fart in a colander. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, um, I'm offended by your grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Well, she just soon sorted you out. Right. Um, I th- I, there's a great danger here. Um, I'm glad to hear you said about Harvey Weinstein. Um, <laughs> it was... <laughs> I've heard uh, his, his name pronounced in many, many different ways, but that's, uh, that's, my, that's the best so far. That's my favourite mm. so far. Harvey Wienerstein, yeah. Mm. Um, <laughs> it's alleged so far, not, yes. nothing so He's far. completely I innocent mean, until proven guilty. Yeah. Yes, and if people of a certain age will remember Mary Whitehouse taking a front at... Everything. 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 <sighs> yeah. Um, ha ha, Sherrod, you are. Yeah. Rock and roll! I was accused. Um, everyone knew that I was homosexual in the office in which I worked, and I was the what, only. What, just man. in the office? <laughs> well, perhaps a bit more broadly than that. Right, okay, even when you left uh, the office, I yes, see. Yes, but a new girl came in, and I was her boss, and I obviously had. I was trying to show her how to do some data import, and I, ob- I must have lent a bit too far the- over her, and she thought I was looking down her cleavage and uh, reported me to personal. Well, everybody laughed it out of the office, and it was kept quiet, and it's a long time ago. But, I mean, lately in, in the newspapers, we've read about things where men have been falsely accused of... Well, Rave. yeah, yeah, exactly. And mud sticks. Of course it does. And people do think... It's barely a week goes is, by where there's somebody there's isn't no dragged through the court. Fire. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, precisely. But, uh, but uh, what, say, what seems wrong about that... Say? Yeah, just on that, just, just on that, before yeah. you go on. What seems um, off about that to me is that the accuser, who it turns out to be um, f- falsely accusing these men, her, her name is uh kept from us we have got no idea who she is but the person who is ac- is falsely accused he's got p- a picture on the front page and on pages yeah. two three four five six seven and eight and a special color pullout section inside in mitigation for the young girl that did accuse me she was young and she was very naive and it was her first job and because i was working in a predominantly female office um People were just used to be being, I wouldn't say even fresh, it wasn't as far as that, and it wasn't friendly, I was very um, managerial with them. They were more fresh with me than I was with they. But in my very first job, uh, I was very junior, and I'd gone home one evening, I was was about 17 at the time, and my boyfriend at the time said, what are all those marks on your backside? It was bruises Wait, where the women what? kept... <laughs> it was bruises where the ladies kept... that I worked with. Um, right, so, kept, OK, so it's not it's not just bones. men, exactly. We'll have uh, to... They were we have to, and I was bruised to bits. OK, <laughs> all right, well, I, 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 I hope you have fully... I, I hope you have fully recovered, Stephen. Um, I recommend a cushion, if not. Thanks a lot, mate. I mean, men are uh, a large part of the problem, no doubt about it, but it's not just men. And and neither is it just politics or just the entertainment business. I've done every kind of job that you can uh, possibly imagine. I've worked on building sites and um, I've yanked tiles off roofs and um, I've delivered cars and everything. Worked in pubs. And in in no in none of those environments, I've worked in the psychology departments of um, uh, major corporations and in uh, government departments, and and in every single one of those places, you'll hear uh, off-colour jokes that these days, according to um, Andrea Ledson, would get you uh, fired. You hear uh, people um, making passes at uh, uh, people that these days according to andrea ledsom should get you fired this is just what people are like you can withdraw from the world until people have mended their wicked ways but um you'll be uh, you'll be withdrawn for a long time well again i'm not talking about criminality there just seems to be a um like a, a crazy feeding frenzy about everything at the moment i mean that's just this week i suppose next week it'll be something else or the week after Partly it's the press um, just running around like sheep, just following each other. 
Oh, the story is this now. Oh, OK, well, we're going to just uh, f flog this story to death and then it'll be something else. And we'll all run after, um, oh, I don't know, devil dogs <laughs> or, uh, uh, you know, whatever it, uh, next week's uh, flavour will be. It is just hysterical. And it does... Um, put a, it does uh, um, enable a cover-up of actual serious crime. This constant coverage about people saying um, a, a joke that used to be acceptable on television at 7 o'clock in the afternoon in the 1970s. 7 o'clock in the evening. I mean, the Wheel Tappers and Shunters Social Club. Anybody remember that? Disgusting. Exactly. Uh, Graham says, is something being put in the water these days? Perhaps Parliament should appoint a witch finder general to sort Westminster out before we run out of MPs. <laughs> Well, we need many witch finder generals, if that's the case. Uh, because we will run out of MPs. But if the uh, microscope is uh, turned on to other businesses, we will also run out of teachers and builders and lawyers and accountants and stock controllers and policemen, don't forget, because they're at it. And the military personnel and religious leaders. Everywhere where humans congregate. That's where you'll find it. Once did. Hello, Sophie. Hi, Nick. How are you? I'm great, mate. Before I go on to my main point, yeah. the man who silenced Trump, he deserves the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> peace <laughs> Prize. How did he do it? Yeah, 11 minutes of <laughs> peace. Yeah. <laughs> and also, um, I don't know if you read, Melania Trump made um, a speech, gave a speech in a school, and she said... Um, that we need to have more empathy and compassion. Mm. Do you think she was thinking of someone? <laughs> <laughs> so her thing is um, uh, about uh, she's been. She, uh, you know, first ladies often have a um, uh, a campaign, and Nancy Reagan's it was um, uh, just say yes. Want to score some pot? <laughs> or no, I can't remember one of the two. Either way, it didn't work. Um, I think um, Mrs. Obama. Uh, Miss, uh, what was her name? Mrs. Obakarama. Obakarama, you remember? <laughs> Back in the good old days. Her thing was uh, eating healthy or education or something like that. Education. I've got, yeah, something like that. And um, Melania's is, uh, is bullying. <laughs> 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 yeah, she's anti-bullying. Yeah, because, uh, you know, wh where would she get a, a close-up view of somebody who is a bully? I'd like to punch him in the face. Yeah, I can't imagine. I think she's developed Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you have sympathy for your cap yeah, yeah. you just there's no way out, Melania, sorry. <laughs> but my main point... I'm not sure that she isn't actually a robot, because she doesn't seem to express any emotion <laughs> of any kind whatsoever. She's, um, I, I think uh, she's a robot, a fembot. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if Silicon Valley came up with a doll that um, mimicked her exactly, so I wouldn't be surprised if she was a robot. And she's left him already, and she's sunning herself in Hawaii. And that's a bot, a robot. <laughs> 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 well, there was, this, there was a, a conspiracy theory going around that uh, she uh, uses a body double, that she just can't, she can't stand being anywhere near him to such an extent that there's a stand-in who hides behind those gigantic sunglasses that she uh, <laughs> welds to her face and um, uses a fake nose. I would... In the land of Trump, I would not be surprised uh, no, by anything. Or anything at anything's all. Anything's no. possible. Uh, exactly. Anything. But anyway... <laughs> now, the, now, I'm still recovering from the first ball. Now, the, I'm probably not going to be very popular with the female fraternity. Uh-oh. But the, pro the problem is, you see, these uh -oh. kind of acts... <laughs> sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm apologising to the female cohort now. Mm -hmm. Now, these acts are all on a spectrum, and the problem arises in the middle of the spectrum when it turns from very silly and immature and misogynistic behaviour to a criminal act. Yes. Now, that's where the muddy grey area is, and that's... Um, where one stops and, and the other starts, yes. Exactly. But most reasonable but, people know where that line is. Exactly. And these kind of acts, they should be treated for what they are, men being silly. Now, it totally denigrates the genuine and real victims of abuse and rape to say these even should get the light of day shone on them. And yes. why the papers 
are behaving like Victorian school headmistresses, headmistresses when on Sunday, we all know, especially the red tops, are going to be licking their lips oh. for the next sex scandal. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, they're, oh, an MP who's done something inappropriate. Well, and yeah, I, I exactly. Just we've, ne we've never heard anything like it. Exactly. And I just think, you know, everyone needs to calm down and, you know, just but think of a witty but, response. But think of it from the newspaper's point of view. They don't want anybody to calm down. They want their uh, audience to permanently on the edge of their seats to screaming with rage because that's what sells papers. You know, I'm sure those women who are held captive by ISIS in Syria could say a thing or two about what real sexual yeah. violence is. But you won't read about that in the newspapers because, uh, no, you exactly. know, n nobody wants to hear about uh, that because who were they and no celebrity was involved. Well, they've got more melanin in their skin, Nick. That's why people don't well, want that's to another thing, hear yeah, about that's it. Well, that's another thing, that's a good point, yeah. But, uh, you know, I just think it totally denigrates the real victims. It's a really serious issue. And I wish, and especially, she can't be a wilting wallflower if she's got to Parliament. Yeah. She should have a witty response ready for him. You should be stronger than that. Exactly right. I mean, we're not talking about somebody's uh, actual physical assault, because that's different. If it's just stupid exactly. uh, men saying stupid things, then, I mean, she surely has met those people before. To get anywhere in politics, you've got, you've got, you've got to hack your way through a forest of stupid men saying stupid things. When people are rude and inappropriate to me. All the time. Yeah, exactly. You can't leave your house without people being rude and inappropriate. I turn around and say, how's the wife? <laughs> 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 well, uh, some people would find that offensive. Where did she go? She just disappeared herself. Um, this one says, of course there are allegations of sexual misconduct in the House of Commons. Watching them debate on TV, one can almost smell the testosterone come off the MPs as the, as the swing their, oh, as they swing their, I don't know if I should read that. Uh, it's worse than a rugby club changing room. It should come as no surprise that these are the same, um, people that are engaged in the misogyny. Yeah, I mean, we're expecting uh, great standards of behaviour from that bray... That, from that room of braying asses? Come on! It's a bit infantile, uh, I uh, got the impression, inside uh, the Palace of Westminster. I mean, men like to regress to an infantile state at the earliest opportunity. And I think that uh, being inside those walls does uh, allow you to um, act like you're back at school, because it kind of f uh, felt like being back at school. A little bit. A little bit like Hogwarts in there. In fact, that's exactly what it's like. Hogwarts with beer. Subsidised booze and childish behaviour. It's a... Um, it's a it's a toxic combination i mean quite right that somebody has to say hang on a minute this this has maybe gone a little bit too far let's take a look at ourselves in the mirror and correct our behavior what well, you don't uh, it doesn't benefit anybody really to get rid of a lot of uh, supposedly i mean they, they have got a long way supposedly talented people just because they uh, said some um off color remark uh, after an evening's drinking uh, a decade or more ago i mean that just that's that's sort of that that smacks of people wanting the attention swiveled on them why people are at home watching the tv or listening to the radio or reading newspapers on the edge of their seat just desperate to take offense at something because then the story is about them I think we just got to calm down and prioritize. Some people are really bad and they should get everything that's coming to them. Other people are just daft and they should get corrected, but they're not fired. They don't have to leave society. I'm listening, dear. You can talk to me. Yeah, big deal. Hundreds of millions of pounds in uh, transfers. Uh, they're uh, investigating uh, football clubs. Big deal. How about the billions of pounds that to companies all over the uh, earth are owed by the tech giants who play one country off against another in, uh, in, uh, in order to avoid paying any tax of any kind whatsoever? And their answer is always the same. Oh, well, we employ a lot of people. <laughs> uh, Chris says this country has gone completely insane. 
We can't retrospectively put today's PC values on those of the past. Aren't people allowed to make mistakes anymore? Uh, no. At least this week. Like I said, next week we'll be talking about something else. Unless there's more celebrities to talk about. Celebrities are the gift that, to keep on giving. But in the absence of any new celebrity names, then we will, the newspapers will have moved on. They'll be talking about something else. Uh, Ryslip. Hello, Vanessa. Hello, Nick. I, I, I just can't believe these women. I worked for an airline for over 25 years, and every single day somebody made some sort of remark or maybe put a hand on somebody's knee. We, we didn't react like these women are reacting. We just would tell them off or you know, tick them off, and, and that was it, and that, it was forgotten. I, I mean, obviously, I'm not, you know, if something's serious and it's a rape allegation, then that's a different matter, but the banter that you get when you work with a lot of men, and, and in those days on long haul, it was a majority of men on the flight. They were either, half of them were gay, half of them were straight, and all of them made remarks to the girls and we just we just laughed it off and i i think they're oversensitive these days i i'm in my 60s now but i really still would not be offended by somebody making a remark but yeah. maybe that's just how i am i i, I find these women oversensitive um and i feel very very sad that they're ruining these men's careers Obviously, if they've done something terrible, then they deserve to be um, investigated. But for these minor remarks and uh, things that I would consider minor, um, I I'm shocked that they would ruin a man's career, particularly as they're near to retirement age. I think that it, it also just it, it to conflate the the two, so, some sort of lewd, drunken remark or yes. pass yes. with serious sexual assault. We, yes. we seem to be just um, um, mashing those two together uh, to make it appear as though what the one is as, is as serious yes. and newsworthy, newsworthy as the other. And that's just that's not helping anybody. No, and any large organisation, you're going to have. Uh, groups of men that are going to make those remarks and if you're that oversensitive then you shouldn't work with men I just think uh, you know and I find that an MP like Andrea Ledson I mean she's already annoyed me over lots of things that she's done but I, I find this absolutely terrible that she's she's caused a man to lose his job and, and really uh, the investigation hasn't really been taken place you know they've only they're just looking into it and the poor man has has decided to go yeah i don't think that it's um uh, established that she has caused him to lose uh, his job no um, no I th we can't draw a direct it line it was sort of inferred on the news tonight well, so perhaps, it, yeah. it, yes uh, you see i suppose there'll be lots of lots of um hearsay won't there <laughs> but um i i think they're all if, if, they're, if they're members of Parliament, they shouldn't be that sensitive. Well, they're working with a lot of men on a daily basis. And, and also, maybe it's a mistake having a bar in the House of <laughs> <laughs> Parliament. You know, I mean, most of them probably spend too long in the bar. Yeah, well, I and, think that's, that um, is that, undeniable. That's I mean, when silliness takes exactly. place, isn't it? I mean, how many businesses have alcohol on tap, the subsidised yeah, alcohol, do, during they? the working yeah. day? No, they do not. All right, thanks yeah. a lot, Vanessa. Well, uh, Theresa May has printed a, a, pub, a code of conduct for all her MPs and the party officials. A published code of conduct now for everybody to follow. The latest step in her response to growing allegations of improper conduct in Parliament. And if sh if this is all coming as a shock to her, then I'm an ice cream sundae. Please. I was in that building for maybe four hours and it was uh, blatant. It was so apparent what was going on. Like a, as though a grown-up who sits in a position of power, who is a lawmaker, an elected representative, needs a written code of conduct to refer to. They're not children. <coughs> Britain's Parliament is the latest institution to become embroiled in a sex scandal, says Reuters, after abuse allegations against Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein has prompted thousands of women and men to share stories about improper behaviour. Thousands. 
thousands of people have shared the stories. Can you believe that? Yes. Yeah. And that leaves only billions of people to go. Everybody's got a story of some uh, thing that made them feel uncomfortable at uh, some point in their lives. Somebody said something that they shouldn't order. Everywhere that people uh, congregate. Defence Secretary Michael Fallon resigned, saying his past conduct had fallen below the required standard. And Theresa May set out the code of conduct on the Conservative Party website, detailing standards expected of elected and appointed party members, the procedure for breaches of those standards, and the party's definitions of discrimination, harassment, sexual harassment and bullying. Which is a total waste of time. One person's sexual harassment is another's come-hither glance. It rather depends on whether you fancy the person who is doing the wooing. I mean, if George Clooney whispered sweet nothings in a woman's ear, she might react differently than if Donald Trump had done it, for instance. Theresa May said, uh, this code sets out for the first time in one place the procedure which the party uses in dealing with complaints, along with a number of additional measures which we have introduced in the light of recent allegations, and it won't make the slightest bit of difference. She's just reacting to a bad news stories because she thinks that she has to do something. The grown-up people do not need a guide. The notion that this is all coming a surprise as well is just absolutely laughable. I've been telling you this for years based on one evening spent in the Palace of Westminster. A drunken, debauched knocking shop is what it looked like to me. Actually, what it, what it, I mean, I've said this many, many times, what it actually looked like to me was a drunken, debauched, gay-knocking shop. Except no money was changing hands, just favours. That's what it looked like to me, and I've said it over and over and over again, to um, absolutely no reaction whatsoever. Why doesn't anyone listen to me? Uh, Georgia says years ago people used to say racist things or inappropriate things to people of colour in the workplace, but eventually people spoke out, and now, thankfully, it doesn't happen so much. <laughs> <laughs> I think it probably does, Georgia. Um, now we have women speaking out and hopefully people will make fewer stupid remarks to women in the workplace in the future. Then we can all just get on with what uh, we go to work to do. Work. It's a form of so social evolution. I'm looking forward to it. Well, yeah, they... Uh it's like football. Football says that uh, uh, congratulate the world of football congratulates itself that they've kicked racism out of football. <laughs> <laughs> sure they have. Uh, Newcastle. Hello, Susan. Hello, Nick. Susan. Can I firstly apologise in advance for not being a hysterical, shouty lady to you? <laughs> okay. What, what is going on? The level of hysteria and that woman, I phoned specifically for that woman, Hannah, who phoned up. And oh, that's I about an hour ago now. I, I love it. Health. Well, let's oh. not get carried away. But I do like it when callers start picking fights with each other. <laughs> I just think, you know, men need to be reassured that not all women are actually... The women who I've heard over the last two or three weeks they're not actually representing anybody or any and I, I, I just can't see what this hysteria is about um i think it's you know, it's, it's turning it, into the lord of the flies that's what we're turning into great britain is becoming the lord of the flies <laughs> <laughs> Who's, I mean, who's let's the little not piggy? Stop it snacking these people. Let's just hurl them out onto the streets, onto stocks. Yeah. You know, you've touched my leg. I'll put your. Not that I'm. By no means am I taken away from the serious allegations. No, that it, it, the, but that's the, that is um, one of my major points. Yes. Is that it, if you just make a a a, 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 a hollering cacophonous racket mm -hmm. about every single little uh, misstep or misspoken yeah. um, comment, then yeah. it does take the eye off the, the, the more serious uh, issues, which are actual, well, uh, um, yeah. uh, you know, sexual attacks. Well, they're actually doing a disservice to the women who have really been, um, you know, who have, who have had a lot of harm. Yeah. And that might be, that might well be you know, it might it might not be at first glance something, but if 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 
if a man is making advances towards a woman and they're quite, you know, um, serious, then these, all of these things that are coming out, this is just noise. You know, everybody's getting on a bandwagon and saying, well, 20 years ago, somebody touched my leg. How terrible was that? <laughs> And it's, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, seem crazy. Be, we, we seem to be. We seem to be uh, in the uh, in the midst of being gripped by a uh, like a fever, and it we're like yeah. fevers. It will dissipate. We will. Mm -hmm. Our minds will be taken by something else. Something yeah. uh, else uh, awful will come along, and we'll be concentrating on that in, instead. It just seems. I mean, I don't want to use the word fashion or fad, but it, there's a there's something a bit faddish about this uh, th this uh, sudden willingness to be offended by things that um, th didn't used to be that offensive. They just used to be regarded as stupid or silly or embarrassing or, you know, I mean, it, if, if you want to be protected from anything that's stupid or silly or embarrassing, well, then I'm afraid that the, the, the news is bad because it, it, it's impossible. Well, I think the line is that people are saying that it doesn't matter what the action or what has happened, as long as you offend me, then that's enough. Yeah, exactly. Which is what Andrea Leadsom said, and that is completely it's wrong. Crazy. Everything, there is everything is offensive to somebody. Everything. Yeah. Well, I'm quite offended by feminists. Does that mean that I can <laughs> hurl them out one by one at a time? It's, it's and they and they are equally offended by you. So I think by you, me because yeah. I'm not a feminist. I just I just think that there has to be. I think it's exactly as you see. I think this will die down at some point, and then maybe just maybe we can move on to the proper discussion, which is about the about getting Donald Trump out of the White House. Of, uh, of <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about him. He offends me. Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, talk about offensive. The, the number of people that have accused Donald Trump of sexual impropriety are mm -hmm. uh, about the same number as the people who have accused Harvey Weinstein. Yes. And But nobody I, is uh, saying a blind word about that because, uh, I don't know, he's like one of those people that just seems to be able to do anything he wants and get, has gotten away with it his entire life. Well, he's Teflon. Yeah. So he can basically That's what that colour is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's exactly. It's Teflon orange. Have you not heard of that? No, I just, I just think that once this all dies down and there'll be more MPs come out, more MPs who have got to resign, etc., etc., and um, then maybe the proper discussion, the grown-up discussion, as you've been talking about tonight, you know, can we have a grown-up, please, and actually get people to seriously look at the situations that are harmful, that are abusive, and be able to tackle those. Yeah. Because at the moment, we're just not doing that. It's just all... all right. yeah, our eyes taken, uh, has been taken away by uh, a, a, the shiny object that the press are showing us. Look, there's a celebrity. Mm -hmm. There's people that you've heard of. Whereas yeah. the more serious uh, issue is probably bullying in the workplace, which yeah. ruins people's lives on a daily basis, rather mm -hmm. than some drunken fumble at a Christmas party ten years ago. Exactly. All right. Susan, I've got to go. Yeah, did you hear about the amount of people that have accused uh, President Donald Trump of uh, doing things that he shouldn't order? It's huge. Or as he would say, huge. I'll come to that in a minute. Oh three four five six, and then there was the Twitter thing that he got taken off Twitter. Oh, what sweet relief <laughs> for eleven minutes. Would you mind telling me what this is all about? Yes, it's about the uh, number of people that have accused uh, Donald Trump of uh, sexual harassment. Sixteen so far. Every single one of them is uh, telling an untruth. Said the White House. Liar! That's what they've said. Sixteen women have accused the President of the United States of America, the leader of the free world, and Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders said they were all lying. The President said... I will be so great to women. I cherish women. <laughs> great to women. Not for women. To women. He said, uh, it's totally fake news. It's fake. It's made up stuff. It's disgraceful what happens. And he's got that last part right. We know he's a serial sexual abuser because he told us so. Like at the Miss Teen USA concert, uh, uh, contest. Girls as young as 15 in a state of undress and he just waltzed in their dressing room like he owned the joint. Which of course he did. I cherish women. 
former Miss Arizona Tasha Dixon told CBS that Trump entered the Miss USA dressing room in 2001 when she was a contestant. He just came strolling right in, she said. There was no second to put on a robe of any sort or clothing or anything. Some of the girls were topless, other girls were naked. Our first introduction to him was when we were at the dress rehearsal and half naked changing into our bikinis. And now he's the most powerful man in the world. You are going to love President Trump. Over and over again. In true Trump style, he confesses and gets away with it. He is made of Teflon. He went on the uh, Howard Stern radio show in 2005 and bragged about doing exactly what these women describe. He said, um, I'll go backstage before a show and everyone's getting dressed and ready and everything else. He said his position as the pageant's owner entitled him to that kind of access. Seemingly aware that what he was doing was making women uncomfortable. He said, you know, no men uh, are anywhere and I'm allowed to go in because I'm the owner of the pageant and therefore I'm inspecting it. Is everyone okay? You know, they're standing there with no clothes and you see these incredible looking women and I sort of get away with things like that. That's a quote. In 1997, former contestants say Trump unexpectedly entered the Miss Teen USA dressing room. And the reigning Miss Universe at the time, Brooke Antoinette Melani Lee, recalls Trump asking her about... <laughs> this is creepy. <laughs> Donald Trump asked the reigning Miss Universe in the Miss USA uh, Teen USA dressing room about uh, Donald Trump's own daughter. He said... Don't you think my daughter's hot? She's hot, right? I feel like I need a shower just saying that. That is creepy. Don't you think my daughter's hot? <laughs> Who would say that? In 2005, asked whether he slept with Miss World contestants, he said it might be his obligation as owner of the contest to sleep with the contestants. And then there was that Access Hollywood uh, tape, that infamous audio that to surfaced ahead of the presidential election last year, where Donald Trump can be heard speaking with Entertainment Tonight uh, program host Billy Bush, speaking disparagingly about women's body parts, saying when you're, when you're a celebrity, they'll let you do anything. And at least 11 women came forward after that audio emerged, alleging that the president touched or kissed them without consent. And now there's uh, the Harvey Weinstein thing, and then there's a political uh, uh, t TV pundits in uh, America, and there's the head of Fox News who settled out of court with, for, what was it, 20 million? And the former presenter on Fox News who settled out of court for 32 million. 32 million dollars! How bad would you have to be to settle out of court for 32 million dollars for one person? And the stink is beginning to settle on uh, men like the President of the United States of America. Who the Christian right in the US seem to be backing 100% because, uh, you know, that's what Jesus would do. I can be more presidential than anybody. What a weird world we're living in. I just, um, I've kind of given up trying to understand it. Um, uh, Nick says, I don't think Twitter should be investigating who suspended Trump's account. They should be investigating who turned it back on. <laughs> yeah, it was a Twitter employee, apparently, deactivated Donald Trump's personal account on their last day of work. I'd like to punch him in the face. Yeah. That means the president's account was down for 11 minutes. Oh, the stuff we must have missed. 11 whole minutes of peace and calm and then uh, the one-man garden hose of self-love and outward-facing rage got turned back on. It only took uh, 11 minutes of quiet. But then the stupid was back. Trust me, I'm like a smart person. During this brief period of downtime, anyone going to the at real Donald Trump Twitter page would see the message, sorry, that page does not exist. We apologize. I am very sorry that I screwed up. And um, you might have thought, if you saw that, well, maybe it was just a bad dream. I mean, no one in their right mind would think that a bright, orange, narcissistic old con man off the telly could actually fool enough people to become leader of the free world. How ridiculous would that be? Just a dream.
and then it all came rushing back. Twitter said the account was down for 11 minutes and has since been restored. We are continuing to investigate and taking steps to prevent this from happening again. What, the being restored part? <laughs> Definitely investigate how to prevent his account from ever being restored again. I mean, he must have broken every rule in Twitter's terms and conditions. Not that anybody has ever read Twitter's terms and conditions or any other terms and conditions for that point, for that matter. I mean, the man's a giant troll. Everything he tweets is offensive and rude and childish and... Mind you, if they kicked off every Twitter user that was guilty of that, they'd have no business left. So forget that I said that. And then the company posted that the outage was due to an employee's action on their final day in the job. And Trump, of course, managed to make it into another thing that underlines the glory that is Donald Trump. He tweeted uh, that the incident meant that his tweeting was having an impact. Yeah, an impact, like flying a plane into a mountain would, would cause an impact. And there were rumours that Trump had been hacked. Because, you know, despite all that fury that he sprayed about Hillary Clinton and her unsecured email account, he's still doing it today. Trump actually uses an old, unsecured Android phone to tweet with, instead of trading it for a, a secure encrypted device approved by the Secret Service. He's a, he is more guilty of everything that he has accused the Democrats and Hillary Clinton of uh, being guilty of. He's like a rock star that uses his old beat-up guitar because it sounds better, because that's what he wrote his hits on. Trump's old phone is what he, wrote his, uh, what he uh, wrote his most offensive messages to women on. It's got sentimental value. Why isn't he in jail yet? Just curious. Is there anything going to stick to uh, the Donald? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe this is a controversial thing to say. I don't think that he is a very nice person. Donald Trump is a very nice person. Once again, I stand corrected. And of course, he's given a, uh, the amount of jobs that he's given to his golf buddies is um, it's just mind-blowing. Drain the swamp. He hasn't drained the swamp. He's picked from it. It's like he's gone fishing in the swamp. Drained it. I was disappointed uh, on a completely uh, different um, uh, issue with um, the vote at 16 thing. I thought that was... Uh, th this... <clears throat> this... Um, th th kind of this silly... Uh, this is... Much of it is silly, these stories about, oh, somebody said something off-colour to me in the 1970s, and I, n I now f feel... Uh, fe I have uh, PTSD the last 30 years because someone made a pass at me I want them to be fired all that uh, kind of feeding frenzy nonsense has um, sort of uh, obscured this uh, farcical commons fight about the vote at 16 because at 16 you're uh, <coughs> too immature to make a decision one way or the other <laughs> I'm gonna send a mirror to the Palace of Westminster in which they should take a good long look at themselves. So I'll come to that in a minute. Everything is going extremely well. You bet your life it is. Well, it seemed like a naked attempt to cling on to power to me, a desperate attempt just to eke out another few years of power from the Conservative Party, because they know that nobody under the age of, uh, oh, should we say 50, is going to vote for them. MPs from uh, Labour's benches shouted, uh, shame. <laughs> they said... <laughs> In a farcical commons fight, says the uh, Mirror, as they claim the... Uh, can you believe the uh, Mirror is uh, still in, uh, no. in, in publication? No, me either. One of the newspapers is going to die soon. I can't believe that it hasn't happened already. The, the, the only one that has um, exited stage left is the Independent. And they have the, uh, the, the shadow of the eye still on the racks. On a yearly basis, the newspapers lose about, on, on average, about 10% of their audience. Down, down, deeper and down like a status quo. I can't believe that there's still so many of them. I mean, we do have a vibrant uh, newspaper business in this country. It's amazing. I don't think we have the best newspaper in the world. I think that's probably in America now. It's probably got the, uh, I, I would uh, hazard a guess that it's the Washington Times. Uh, Post, rather. Washington Post. That's probably the best newspaper in the world at the moment. But, you know, they're right on the doorstep of uh, all that uh, craziness in Pennsylvania Avenue. You are going to love President Trump. Yeah. 
<laughs> the newspaper business love him, that's for sure. But anyway, over here, uh, there was uh, a commons fight about whether we should give the vote to a 16-year-old. And the uh, Conservative Party were determined not to let that happen. Labour MPs shouted shame in a Commons fight as they claimed that Tory tactics had killed off their bid to lower the voting age from uh, 18. And it would be in uh, Labour's uh, uh, favour for that to happen, because you would imagine that people under the age of uh, 18, actually under the age of 50, uh, will be, would be more likely to vote Labour. I mean, I've said this um, a couple of times over the past few weeks, but it used to be that uh, about the age of 45, 50 years old, something like that, you, people would change from being left wing to right wing because they would have acquired a certain amount of money, uh, property and all the rest of it, and they would want to protect that. They don't, don't want to share it out. The, uh, the, the desire to share uh, is in inverse proportion to the amount that you've got. I don't know whether that's true or not, but it's, 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 uh, I think that's probably about right. When you haven't got anything, then uh, yes, you can be a socialist and a communist. Sure, everybody should have uh, an equal share. Uh, share it fairly, but don't take a slice of my pie. They are Pink Floyd again. Votes for 16-year-olds have been blocked without a vote in the House of Commons fight. Labour MP shouted, shame! As they claimed Tory tactics killed off their bid to lower the voting age from uh, 18. Uh, the debate was so angry that the deputy speaker had to cut in and shout, "This is not this is not a football match." <laughs> Labour allies and Tory ex-chancellor George Osborne joined in a campaign to lower the voting age to let young people into democracy. Wow, a positive spin on a George Osborne story. You remember George Osborne, don't you? No! Yes, that's him. He was actually for lowering the voting age, huh? Tories, uh, who would likely see their vote share shrink, fought it, claiming that 16-year-olds don't have the political knowledge or maturity required. <laughs> <coughs> oh, dear. <coughs> oh, dear. That's my apple backing up on me. Hang on. Oh. Uh, where was I? <clears throat> Labour accused them of using out-of-date parliamentary rules to ensure that the move would be blocked today. In other words, they filibustered it. They just talked and talked and talked and talked, yacked on and on and on. <laughs> Um, the move would have been made law through a backbench bill by Labour MP Jim, Jim McMahon. It was the second on the list in a five-hour debating slot today. But Commons rules, which uh, the Tories have refused to change, say that any Friday law should be shelved if it doesn't get a vote by 2.30. Because, uh, you know, they all want to uh, slope off for the weekend. Isn't that terrible? We're not prepared to work beyond 2.30. So, by total coincidence, several Tory MPs spoke for ages in favour of the first law of the day, which was a, a popular bid to force the police to wear body cameras when they restrained people. Oh, that apple is really doing me all sorts of... Um... Oh, I think I ate it too quickly and now it's backing up on me. Fruit is very dangerous. I recommend you don't eat any. Uh, five Tories spoke for 95 minutes on this uh, first law of the day to uh, force the uh, police to wear body cameras. And most people are for that. I mean, why, why would you be against it? 95 minutes they went on, droning on for longer than the actual author of the bill spoke for. So they were just trying to, um, to, to time the proceedings out so that uh, nobody got to vote on the uh, reducing the voting age to 16. Labour had the 100 MPs needed to force a vote through the closure motion aiming to stop Tories from filibustering, but it didn't work. Because the debate was so short and subject so important that uh, Deputy Speaker Eleanor ruled that it would not be right to uh, force a vote uh, so soon. Huh. 
it does uh, 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 maybe i'm getting this wrong in which case you must correct me but it does seem to be um naked opportunism on the part of the conservative party just in order to shore up uh, their uh, slender uh, 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 majority i mean if we went to the polls and uh, six uh, people between the ages of 16 and 18 were given a vote then i think they'd be looking at uh, just decades in the wilderness they haven't exactly ingratiated themselves to the youth the conservatives uh, labor mp jim mcmahon said 16 and 17 year olds today may be denied the right to vote but in two years time <clears throat> they will remember who blocked them from having that democratic right only two years earlier well you'd think so in what's described as a bad-tempered debate, Tories were repeatedly accused of patronising young people by claiming they weren't mature enough. <laughs> they really have uh, no sense of self-awareness, politicians, do they? Not mature enough. Have they ever seen Prime Minister's questions? I mean, seeing it from within the House, when you're on the benches and everybody's waving their paper in the air and going... I mean, that might be all uh, jolly good fun. After, you know, a couple of pints, it seems like they're all drunk to me. But watching it on the television, actually seeing what it's like for uh, outsiders, it's just flat-out embarrassing. Tory Philip Davis accused Labour of wanting to give votes to ten-year-olds. Oh, for crying out loud. No, they wanted to give votes for 16-year-olds. I mean, that's not the same as wanting to give votes to 10-year-olds. I mean, why stop there? Why not say that lowering the age of voting would be the same as allowing your pets to vote? Or give the vote to a speak-your-weight machine? I mean, if you're going to get silly, let's go all in. Uh, Tory Bernard Jenkins said North Korea had a lower voting age, proving it doesn't necessarily work. <laughs> this is ridiculous and they're saying that 16 year olds don't have the maturity that's just comical and Tory uh, Robert Jenrick tried to prove his point by saying that 16 year olds couldn't watch a film classic The Terminator so if they're not mature enough for that then they shouldn't be mature enough to vote they can't watch The Terminator Negative. Uh, The Terminator is a 15 not an 18 so 16-year-olds can watch The Terminator. Affirmative. Even though there are a lot of, uh, you know, deaths and a lot of shootings, a lot of people get uh, horribly injured. You know, but apart from that, it's all good family entertainment. Correct. And the Liberal Democrat MP uh, Weira Hobhouse said, uh, I feel myself strangely transposed in a costume drama of about 100 years ago. Those people who resisted the women's vote came out with exactly these arguments of immaturity and disinterest that women wouldn't know what they were talking about. Nobody knows what they're talking about. I mean, we had the, uh, oh, shall I mention the B word? No. We had the Brexit vote and nobody knew what they were voting for. Everybody was armed with um, a, a satchel full of misinformation and voted uh, according to their prejudices. Nobody had an, an actual idea of what the consequence of their vote would be. Nobody knows what they're talking about as far as voting is concerned. And 16-year-olds are at least as uh, educated and bright and intelligent and mature as the 36-year-olds or 56-year-olds or 106-year-olds. There's a list. Here's a list of uh, things that you're allowed to do when you're 16. Well, I'll, I'll come to that in a minute. And I can tell you the uh, number of countries where you're allowed to vote at 16. All of them are fully actualized and uh, properly functioning countries. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll uh, lay that on you in uh, just one moment. Oh, here's a call in Crystal Palace. Hello, Kevin. Good evening, Nick. How are you? Good, thanks. Good. Um, it's a real shame the Tories filibustered the um, motion to reduce his voting age to 16. Yeah. Um, you know, at 16, what you can go to war for your country, you can have sex, um, I think you should be allowed to vote too. Um, I don't know how old you were in 1979, I know how old I was. Um, 79? 19? No, 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 19. Oh, no, 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 oh, the, the song was about you, was it? 
Um, no, anyway, so... Yeah, no, so, so that's, that's the... What's, that, what's 1979 got to do with it? That's when Thatcher got in. Oh, yeah. Thatcher, yeah. <laughs> Thatcher. Every time people say her, uh, I don't know, maybe it's just because I was at university during the uh, the course of her reign, and uh, every time anybody said her name, it, it was um, spitting it out with fury. But it always sounds like um, th just that, regardless of who's saying it. Thatcher, it's just, it just sounds as though it's uh, dripping with hate whenever anybody says it. She was a thick woman. Um, do you know... Well, I, mean, I don't I'll, think I'll one, thick I'll is give, right. I'll give you one guess as to, uh, how, as to what age I was in 1979. I don't care, Kevin, if that's any help. Good. OK, that's all right. What all age right, were you? Guess. One guess. Uh, 19. No. 16. Hey, I better got that right. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. That's it, mate. Oh, okay. Excellent work. Thanks a lot, Kevin. Oh, he was on and gone. I, I preferred it when he was gone. Uh, this tweet says, Donald Trump corrects all the lefties. Donald Trump corrects all the lefties, but I do feel for him because all these terrible high court traitor judges are constantly working against him. Does that make any sense? No. Oh, okay. Thank goodness for that. I thought it was me. Um, and Lorna says, why should 16 and 17 year olds have the vote? They're not interested in anything unless it suits them. <laughs> That's not a controversial thing to say, is it? Why should 16 and 17 year olds have the vote? They're not interested in anything unless it suits them, says Lorna. That's not 16 and 17 year olds, Lorna. That's everybody. That's people. People aren't interested in anything unless it suits them. Nobody cares about uh, anybody else except themselves. Okay, so this is uh, from a, uh, a website. It was the first thing that I came that came up when I dialed up what you're allowed to do at 16. It's a website called Euthoria, a website for young people in Cambridgeshire. What can uh, I do at 16 is the question. Well, you can get married or register a civil partnership with consent. You can drive a moped or an invalid carriage. You can consent to sexual activity with others aged 16 and over. You can drink wine or beer with a meal if, if accompanied by somebody over 18. You know, <laughs> because, uh, you know, they'll keep you safe. If you're 18, oh, you're plenty mature enough. You can get a national insurance number. You can join a trade union if you can find one. Are there any trade unions left? No. Uh, I, I think train drivers, and that's about it. You can work full-time if you've left school. You can be paid the national minimum wage for 16 and 17-year-olds. Uh, the national minimum wage. Wow. Oh, fabulous. There's something to look forward to. You can join the armed forces with parental consent. If mummy lets you, you can kill people for a living. You can change your name by deed poll. In fact, you could change your name to deed poll. <laughs> Somebody should do that. You can leave home with or without parental consent. You can say, right, that's it, I'm leaving. In, circumstance, in uh, certain circumstances, you must pay for prescriptions and dental treatment and eye tests. Well, it hardly counts as something that you can do. It's more like something that's forced upon you. You can choose a GP who won't have the time to see you. By the time you get an appointment with your GP, no matter how old you are, you'll either be cured or dead. You can consent to medical treatment. You can buy premium bonds. You can pilot a glider. Uh, you can buy a uh, lottery ticket. First of all, you buy the lottery ticket, and then you say... <laughs> Every time I buy a lottery ticket, I think, well, I'm, I'm, I'm bound to win three, four, five million pounds, ten million pounds, probably on a rollover. It just seems so obvious that the numbers that uh, the machine picked are uh, the ones that are going to win. And I feel there's a there's a quite a large part of me that's absolutely convinced that I'm going to win. And then the next day, I search frantically for the email that tells me that uh, congratulations, you're a winner, and it never appears. 
How many times do you have to play that uh, game before you win £10 million, by the way? If you're 16, you can register as a blood donor. You can register, but you can't give. You can't give till you're uh, 17 because, uh, you know, you haven't got fully mature blood or something. I've got no idea. And you can apply for a passport without parental consent. All of those things you're uh, allowed to do at 16. But the biggie for me is joining the armed forces. You can shoot someone on behalf of the government. They'll say, shoot that person over there at, at the age of uh, 16, as far as I'm aware. Join the armed forces give you a gun and a rocket launcher and a tank and uh, who knows what but you're not allowed to vote you're not allowed to vote for the political party that will tell you to do the shooting how ridiculous is that and that's what the conservatives have uh, managed to uh, prevent uh, from uh, happening today uh, probably naked self-interest I mean, never mind about uh, that uh, emailer telling me that um, 16 and 17 year olds are only doing on, only do things in their own self-interest. Everybody does. That's why politicians uh, talked this bill out because they pr probably were completely convinced that 16 and 17 year olds would not vote Tory. And there's uh, they're, they're totally justified in uh, thinking that because they probably wouldn't. But there's only two years to go. I mean, they're not going to be uh, excluded from voting forever, and I would assume that they will have memories. And in a couple of years' time, if, they, if you are a youth leader worth the, your salt, you will be reminding people of that when they reach 18. In two years' time, those 16 and 17-year-olds will have the ability to vote, and you should remind them of who prevented them from voting for the previous two years. You can vote at 16 in the following countries, all of which, uh, as uh, the, the last time I looked, are still functioning. Chaos does not uh, rage on the streets of Argentina or Austria or Brazil. Well, maybe Brazil. Or Cuba, Ecuador, Nicaragua, the Isle of Man, and Jersey, if you can believe that, and Guernsey, and Bosnia and Serbia and Montenegro. How bizarre, what a list. It's a bit odd that uh, the Isle of Man and Jersey are more enlightened than the mainland. That's a first! They're, they're, they used to be playing catch-up, now they've overtaken us. I can't believe it. So, uh, votes at 16. Uh, stupid idea? Great idea? Uh, we need a little bit of uh, fresh air? Or uh, just not uh, worldly wise enough to be given that responsibility? Uh, Ted says, give 16-year-olds a choice, sex and mopeds, <laughs> or vote and join the army. That will concentrate their minds. They could vote for it. That seems like a bit of a, a stark choice. Sex and mopeds, or vote and join the army. How about sex and vote, or mopeds and army? All mopeds should be banned with uh, immediate effect. They just are, uh, they're just too noisy. Why do they have to be that noisy? They've got a... Uh, an engine about the size of the uh, of your average hairdryer and yet they make a noise that can be heard from a mile away why are they that noisy motorbikes are two-wheeled uh, motored uh, vehicles uh, seem to be uh, have two categories one is very very small engines and very very large engines are equally noisy You've got people uh, riding uh, Harley Davidsons, which um, make it sound as though the world is being rent apart. Like fissures are opening up in the Earth's crust. Why they have to make that uh, kind of noise, I've uh, no idea. Probably uh, making up for uh, a lack of um, uh, uh, what's in the trouser department, it would be my guess. Mopeds are um, at the opposite end of the scale, but equally uh, loud uh, for, for no apparent reason whatsoever. Why, why do they have to be that loud? It's just beyond me. Uh, Kay says it's totally wrong, but they don't have the right to vote. If you can get a full-time job and you can pay taxes in the UK at 16 years old, then you should have a say in where your money goes uh, with the right to vote. Well, that's a very sensible thing to uh, say, Kay. And I think you're completely correct in every respect. 
If you can get a full-time job and pay taxes, then you should have a say in where your money goes. Correctamundo. Uh, Prince William was uh, yakking on about the future of wildlife. Uh, he was uh, saying that uh, the future of wildlife is uh, under threat from uh, people who just can't keep their hands off each other. Disgusting. There's too many of us. And it's um, proving negative for the flora and the fauna. <laughs> Prince William has uh, been saying this. Uh, it's that people are having too many children. That's the big problem. And he wanted to explain that to us before he had to take some time off to help choose a nanny for his third child. Three seems like uh, one too many. For the benefit of, uh, of uh, humankind. For the benefit of the planet. As he prepared to welcome his third child, he said, In my lifetime we have seen global wildlife for populations decline by over half. Over half, many of which were personally shot by his family. Well, I was uh, yakking on about the uh, lack of insects uh, just last week. Over the past, I can't remember the exact uh, figure, so I'll make it up. Over the past 10 years, there's been a 75% reduction in the number of uh, insects that uh, flit uh, hither, thither and yon. Can you believe that? Yes. Yeah. Every time you drive anywhere, your car used to be covered in insects. Ain't covered no more. You could uh, drive a hundred miles through uh, con uh, verdant countryside in this uh, land and uh, not hit a single one of them, because there aren't any left anymore. And uh, w uh, well, uh, b there are barely any left anymore. A seventy-five percent reduction is uh, catastrophic, and it's not just. Uh, um, and I think insects are, uh, as far as weight goes, the uh, the um, the biggest uh, or the most numerous species. The, the biggest species on earth right. that's just a very bad way of putting that but do, do you know what i mean of course you do uh he said um we're gonna have to work uh, much harder and think much deeper if we are to ensure that human beings and the other species of animal with which we share this planet can continue to coexist we can't coexist humans cannot coexist we will eat anything that we like the taste of and kill off anything that we don't like the look of. So for the animal kingdom, they'd better either be tasty or cute, because that's all we'll have room for after we concrete over the planet and build high-rise executive flatlets for Malaysian property funds to buy. But they're still building ever more of those things in uh, London, probably where you are too. God, it's excruciating. The skyline has been uh, robbed. It's been taken from us over the past 10 years or so. Everywhere you look, there's the red uh, light of, uh, the, uh, of um, the top of a crane, ready to lift up another block of uh, architecturally dull executive flatlets. Tiny little rooms with tiny little cupboards. Not designed for people to live in, but designed to sell as a money laundering operation. It's amazing that our um, the 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 skyline of uh, uh, London has been taken from us. Didn't do that in Paris. Skyline of Paris is still the same. Still the same. It's not been ruined. And and who said that it was okay to do that? By the way, I mean I know that's not what I'm talking about right uh, at the moment, but I'm uh, I'm going uh, off my own topic. I want the name of the person who's who said that it was okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Which oaf said that was uh, what we want? Here we go. 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 Okay. Not mentioning any names. Tower after tower after tower, and almost nobody living in them because no lights are on. Because they're not built for people to live in; they're built for people to sell to foreign property funds and the international criminal super rich to launder their ill-gotten gains. It's terrible. I mean, they're not solving London's uh, housing uh, crisis, are they? Not if they start at a million pound for a studio. They're not. How is this? Uh, this in future is going to be thought as one of the great scandals of all time, because London skyline is now gone forever. That's it. Finished. It's over. Anyway, 
Prince William is very upset that we are um, uh, unable to coexist with the flora and the fauna. Uh, maybe we'll create android animals when the proper animals are all gone to remind ourselves of the good old days. You know, when uh, David Attenborough had something to point a camera at. Prince William said Africa's rapidly growing human population is predicted to more than double by 2050. A staggering increase of three and a half million pound uh, people a month. What? what? Three and a half million people a month. He says there's no question that this increase puts the wildlife and habitat under enormous pressure. Urbanization, infrastructure development, cultivation, all good things in themselves, but how will they uh, but they will have a terrible impact unless we begin to plan and take measures now. All we have to do is to plan and take measures now. Oh no. So uh, that's that then. <laughs> we don't plan and we will not take measures until after the point at which it's too late. Has he not been paying attention? Planning for the future is not what we do. Short-termism is what we do. Politicians aren't remotely interested in planning for the future. They want to plan for right now. You know, Donald Trump is not that uh, unique. Not really. He, he's not interested in the future either. He just wants... Uh, he, he's just a desperate for applause at this minute. Which is what most politicians uh, on Earth are uh, solely interested in. Immediate approval. They're not interested in approval 10 years from now, or the history books to write warmly of them 20 years from now. They want an applause this minute. Urbanization, infrastructure development, cultivation, all good things in themselves, but they will have a terrible impact, said uh, Prince William. He says, the earth doesn't have the capacity to sustain us all, while a vast population is consuming uh, natural resources at western levels. Yes, and um, c consuming resources at western levels will, of course, make that population ever more vast and wobbly. But that's the thing, is why should we uh, ref uh, uh, refuse to allow the third world to uh, ruin the planet like we have? Why shouldn't the third world have a, a walk-in fridge and a giant TV hung off the wall and two cars in the driveway and all of that good stuff? But we've acquired all of that, and uh, then, then, then we suddenly are uh, in a, a position of uh, such a comfortable luxury as to uh, think, uh, actually, maybe we've gone the wrong way here. Let's prevent the rest of the world from acquiring all of these uh, amusements and all of this food and all of this fat because we don't want uh, to uh, we don't want uh, Africa for instance to ruin the world like we did we got here first only we must get prizes Prince William said the earth doesn't have the capacity to sustain us all while a vast proportion is consuming natural resources at western levels he says, having, uh, well, no, there's an organisation called Having Kids, which uh, promotes smaller families. They actually wrote an open letter to the royal couple in July, urging them to consider foregoing having a third child in favour of modelling a smaller, sustainable family. You know, um, uh, giving us a, uh, a positive, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, role model. Role models. That's, I mean, what's the royal family for if they're not for a positive role models? I mean, talking about uh, sexual harassment, the, uh, the, the male leader of uh, that family sh should be in a politically correct jail right now for all of the so-called gaffes that he has uh, uttered over the years. Why the press are um, c constantly uh, prostrating themselves in front of uh, him in particular, I, I just don't get gaffes they call it anybody else would be uh, an offensive old man who's never been corrected he's just guilty of gaffes I mean, if the whole world lived the life of the royal family we'd run out of resources on this planet pretty soon and i'm not sure there would be enough planets in the solar system we'd have to go to the next galaxy to do some farming but i you know I, he, he, uh, prince william could just spend his life um, on a, a polo horse chasing fillies 
So maybe it's good that he uh, speaks out on uh, topics of um, uh, import and great interest. But I, I expect that if uh, anything like if if he becomes anything like his dad, he'll just be uh, thought of as a meddler. Yeah, what are you meddling? You know, ugh, painful. We we like them silent and smiling and waving. <laughs> That's it. As soon as they start to speak about anything of any great import, people uh, say that they're meddling. As long as you just keep smiling and waving, then we'll keep giving you the uh, £60 million pound a year or, or whatever fantastic amount it is these days. So they opened their big mouths and out came talk. Talk, talk. Yes, here's a person talking in Cheshire. Hello, oh, James. Hello, Nick. Yes, James. You were talking about um, 16, 17-year-olds being able to vote. Yes. Um, obviously, I'm a, a professional footballer and I was like getting paid good money at 17. So obviously I wasn't able to vote for where my money went to. Do you know what I mean? No. no. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's like communism. Like, if Jeremy Corby went in and like the 16, 17 year olds not being able to vote, and um, obviously people like me are paying taxes and they're just spending my money when I'm working hard and, you know. I don't Sorry. know. W working hard and professional footballing, it, uh, th th I don't think the two uh, c can coexist. <laughs> well, plus, 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 I don't believe you. But, you know, apart from that, good effort, better luck next time. 0345 6060 973. Uh, this one says, the best thing at 16 was my moped. They should be able to vote. I did 73 hours a week at work when I was 16. <laughs> 73 hours a week? What were you doing? Selling drugs? Nobody works that hard. Want to score some pot? 73 hours. The best thing at 16 was my moped. What, have you heard of music? We didn't have mopeds. That, that just seems so desperately uncool, a moped. I mean, a, um, like a, a, a moat, a moat, a, what do we used to call them? An, uh, an under 50cc motorbike you used to be able to ha have. Uh, some kids had one uh, at school. I don't know if that's uh, still the law. But they seem to be uh, significantly safer. Of course, not in the hands of a 16-year-old, but as a vehicle, they seemed uh, safer than a moped with those uh, tiny, silly wheels. They should be outlawed. Why do they even exist? Um, uh, w w what's the difference between a moped... Why would you have a moped and not a motorbike? They don't seem safer to me. And, like I said before, uh, they make a noise like um, like the gates of hell have just been opened. Awful. Which is another excellent reason not to go to Thailand, because they're everywhere. That and the heat. Uh, Great Yarmouth. Hello, Tina. Hello, Nick. Tina. How are you? Great, mate. Um, yeah, the about the royals and their protection of animals. Yeah. I mean, why don't they sell some precious jewels or sell some gold? in order to create the money to look after these animals. Why do we have to pay all the time? Uh, well, there's probably a lot of people shouting at the radio saying, well, it's not their jewels, but they have plenty of jewels that are their own. And, um, they do. and the ones that are uh, supposedly ours aren't really ours because we don't get to touch them, feel them, squeeze them and smell them. They do. No, but they've got plenty of money. Plenty of money, yeah. Put it like that. They've got plenty of cash. Plenty of readies, they can always do some, you know, sponsored things and create money. Why do, why do they have to, you know, get the public involved and why do we have to, you know, all participate in giving money to these things? Why? I, I... We're all skint. <laughs> Most of us are in debt. You know, well, we've that's got true. food banks. That is true, yeah. We've got the food banks. People have sold their gold, we've pushed it off to try and get a little bit of money to buy stupid things like a washing machine in order to make our lives a bit better. You I've, know, I've got a stupider thing than that, Tina. How about a thousand pound phone? I know that's uh, absolutely disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. Nothing is ever worth anything anymore. You look at the price of things and you, you, you could knock that price down by, I don't know, an eighth. And probably the eighth is the proper price of that film, what it took to manufacture it. Where did the rest of the money come from? Are we all live in Walton Mitty World or what? Nothing is right anymore. <laughs> Everything is making me very stressed. <laughs> it really is because well, I'm just you need to, uh, you need fed to up. Just, uh, Parliament. You just need to calm down, Tina. Well, you know, this, this, this 
country and the people in charge of it are mm. really getting on my nerves yeah. because they're thick. They're absolutely thick. They do not know what is going on in the rest of the country, and they're just they're just blindfolded, they're just narrow-minded, they're single-minded, they've got these blindfolds on, just, you know, walking into their own little worlds, and they don't give a damn about anybody else. Right. You need to take a breath, Tina, because this is obviously winding you up. And it's no, not... I like to get like this. I'm yeah, passionate. Yeah, see, and I, I think no, that... No, I'm very uh, passionate. Well, let, let me tell you about this, Tina, because this is important. Well... <laughs> you are addicted to anger. No, I'm not. No, I believe that that's true. No, I'm not. You just told me that you like to get like this. Now no, I like, know I'm, what that's like uh, because I'm I used not. to be. I used to be. I used to be addicted to anger too. No, that's passion. No, I don't think so. That I, is. I don't Love think and hate so. Are on a, it just inside the same coin. Let They're me, all emotions. I like to get. I am yeah, emotional. But love and, and hate. I do like to love and hate are not the same. Just because they're both emotions doesn't mean to say that they are the same. I mean, that's like saying that all music is the same, but it isn't. See, here's the reason that you like to get angry. Sorry? The reason that you like to get angry is because it produces a chemical reaction in your brain, and all sorts of chemicals start uh, squirting about the uh, inside of your skull. Perhaps I need, perhaps I need those chemicals, because I'm not on drugs. Well, it is a drug. That's what I'm saying. You are a <laughs> drug addict, Tina. I am not. Yeah, I believe that that's true. <laughs> I think that you anyway, are a, you're a I drug addict, and I'm not on drugs. And you are um, providing your own drugs. When you get angry, here's what happens. Yeah, go on, tell me. And I, I can, uh, I from this conversation, this is exactly what has happened. When when you started, you were a, a little bit uh, calm, and then you said something that was like, mm, and you you sort of re revved up the anger a bit, um. and in your mind, you uh, detected that uh, chemical reaction and you thought oh yeah there it is i'm going to chase after that feeling and then oh, you I didn't and know. then you almost immediately got angrier and angrier and your voice started to go up and up so i think that it is a um, an addiction to the well, chemicals I know, I because i'm a bit impatient and i had to wait no, some time to I, try to get on the phone oh to you. i see it's my fault yeah it's all your fault <laughs> <laughs> No, I, you should listen to me, Tina, because this is important. You may be right, I don't know. I, I changed my myself. life for the better when I, I really... I a doctor. When I re you don't need a doctor, you just need to listen to me. Oh, right. You just need to listen to me. Why doesn't yeah. anyone listen to me? This is important. This is a life-changing experience that you may be uh, on the cusp of here, Tina. Well, I, yeah. I changed I'm, I'm my life change. when I realised that this is what I was doing. <laughs> Because I used to get wound up at the silliest, tiniest little thing, and it didn't really ma matter what it was. I w it would be, um, oh, pff, I don't know, the, the toast popped up and it hadn't browned the bread sufficiently. No, I don't get like that at all. So I, I had to put it back down again. It'd be like, oh, no, I don't, God, the I toast don't. is like up like that. And then you'd sense, oh, yeah, there it is. And I'd get angrier about this and that <laughs> and the other, and I'd sort of go, Rrr! Just enjoying the, uh, the the chemical reaction that was going on in my mind, and I think that's what you're doing too, Tina. No, I honestly don't get like that. Honestly. You just got that like that to me. Yeah, perhaps it's because I'm, I'm a bit nervous about speaking on radio. I'm not used to, you know, probably talking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anyone's listening, but no, you know. I, I don't think that's right, no, Tina. I, I yeah, no, I'm not like sound, that. I'm not you like don't that sound today. nervous to me. Yeah, I am a little bit nervous. I am 50, and I had quite a, sh a shy sort of upbringing, really. You're 50? You made it halfway <laughs> there. <laughs> <laughs> What's so the what shy upbringing do, got to do with it? it, it you should um, recognise this behaviour and try to uh, wean yourself off it for the benefit of your, uh, of your health. And what did you do for you? Uh, exactly that. I, 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 I decided one day I'm not going to do this anymore. And um, I pretty much, uh, c c not completely, but I've, I've stopped that repetitive, um, uh, or that, well, that sort of repetitive behaviour where, uh, where you do something, it winds you up a little bit, and you think, oh yeah, there it is, there's that juicy feeling, I'm going to go after that. And so you get angry and angrier and start shouting and swearing. Um, whereas these days, I, I only shout and swear when I'm uh, engaged in uh, DIY. Which I think is the is the correct way to do uh, DIY. 
it, you must swear a lot because it's I don't just swear a lot, actually. it's just very very annoying DIY. I was no, doing I, I was doing DIY lot. this week, I, and I, what, I, what it is, I would like to apologise for all the swearing. <laughs> what, it, what it is? I've had flu for the past four weeks. What? Yes. Did you get the jab? No, I didn't get a chance to. I wanted to, and then I got flu. Because I think the the jab gave me flu. <laughs> well, of course it does. Well, no, I don't think so. Well, it can't well, it's not do, can't well, it? Uh, no, if I don't think... If your immunity it's not is supposed not up to. to par and you have that flu jab, yeah. I was going to act against you rather than for you. Well, that's not what it says on the tin. <laughs> <laughs> it don't tell you that. It's the opposite of that. You, what, what we all should have... It could have, have been a coincidence. We should all have a blood test first to see whether our white blood cell count is up to par. And if it is, go ahead with the flu jab. But no, they don't tell you that. They just go ahead willy-nilly and, you know... If you live or die, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they don't care anymore. I think there's nothing wrong with having the flu jab, and everybody should have it unless they uh, their doctor recommends I, I against it. I would have it. had it, but they didn't get a chance. And I've had it for four weeks. Oh, God, I was on the train uh, I, uh, c coming out of uh, London uh, on um, t Tuesday, having just done my uh, podcast. God, I thought I was going to die. Yeah. The, um, the, it was absolutely packed. Yeah. Uh, and um, this uh, dopey girl got on, twiddling her hair. She was wearing uh, just a shirt. It was freezing, blooming oh cold God. outside. She was just wearing a shirt. She was uh, coughing like her life was uh, uh, ebbing out of her being. She, was, yeah. she wasn't going to make it home on that uh, train. And coughing and coughing and coughing. Real throaty, phlegmy coughs. Uh, God, it was vile. Yeah. And did she stay by the door to cough politely into the door where uh, she wouldn't get her... Uh, she coughed uh, her, all over her No, body, of course she didn't. She, didn't. she took yeah. a position in the, in the, the middle of where everyone was uh, sitting and proceeded to cough over they at don't least... Even put their hand over the mouth at anymore. least eight to they ten put hands people. Over the mouth she was spraying oh, us God. all with her sputum. Oh. Awful. Oh, disgusting. I hate shoppers who do that over the deli counter. So oh. I, I hid behind a newspaper. <laughs> I must have looked ridiculous. <laughs> I, I, opened, I, I was wishing that uh, the, the standard was a broadsheet of paper, then I could have covered myself with it like a blanket. But I just p put it up over my face and um, I basically hid underneath it like a tent. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> anyway, have the jab, Tina, and please yeah. try to calm down. I try as a flu. My hormones are all over the place, I admit to that. I can't control my chemicals. Just try. I'm passionate. <laughs> you, yeah, a, a little bit too passionate. Try to dial down the passion, I, just a little bit. You're blood in me. <laughs> You've got too much blood. <laughs> 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 yeah. At least right. at least a couple of pints uh, over full, right? No, I've I no understand. Good. Alcohol's not good for me. All right. I just get worse. Okay. I'm not I suggesting you take alcohol. I'm just uh, it, may, it may be that you actually have too much blood in your body. I would go to your doctor and uh, have that checked out, Tina. <laughs> and um I'm just trying to help. Am I helping yet? No. He is a very sick and dangerous man. Yeah, and he's going on a trip uh, to uh, Asia. Just heard in the news Donald Trump has landed in Hawaii on the uh, first stop in what he <laughs> on what he called a very important trip. It's huge. He and the First Lady uh, Melania, or her uh, stand-in, her body double, were greeted at, uh, at uh, Hickam Air Force Base in Hawaii. Trump left Washington, D.C. Uh, earlier today, launching a five-nation, 13-day tour that uh, presents his first trip to the Asian Pacific as uh, president. He's going to go over there and... Uh, uh, oh, where is it? Oh, here it is. I'm president! Can you believe it? Yeah, that's what I'll say. <laughs> I'm president, can you believe it? Uh, he's going to uh, attend the East Asia Summit in the Philippines, where he'll meet grown-ups. I wonder how he's going to behave. He says, we're staying a an extra day because the following day is actually the most important day. Trump told the White House press pool on Friday. His trip was initially scheduled to end uh, the day the forum began for the leaders of the East Asian, Southeast Asian and South Asian regions. So he's going to go to that uh, conference. North Korea's nuclear threat is expected to be a key topic under discussion. Uh, he's going to be in Japan on Monday. His trip also includes stops in China, 
Maybe he'll go to uh, see the uh, the Chinese wall. I'm building a wall, okay? I'm building a wall. I'm building a wall, okay? I'm building a wall. And uh, he's going to go to uh, South Korea and uh, Vietnam. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Josh says, I was 18 in 1979 and I voted in my first general election. You could say that my 18th birthday present was Thatcherism. I've had better prezzies, to be honest. Yeah, I bet. You know, um, uh, I mentioned uh, the uh, new iPhone to the uh, caller that uh, I was just talking to. And it seems beyond belief, really, that um, people would actually queue for a phone that costs a thousand... It costs a thousand pounds! A grand for a phone. And I, I thought that uh, people had stopped queuing for this sort of thing. I thought that that was a uh, fad that had um, dissipated on the wind like a bad smell. But this time around, people were actually queuing. Ch uh, nah... Just before they released it, Apple said, oh, it's good. We're, we're not going to be able to keep up with demand. The, the, the numbers of uh, these phones is going to be very, very limited. So maybe they were just engineering a, um, a, a queue for people who, uh, who um, were keen to get their hands on one. Thought, wow, if, unless we uh, queue overnight and uh, pitch a tent outside their shop, maybe we won't get one. Maybe it was just clever marketing on their part, or maybe they were actually uh, real, uh, really concerned. I don't know. We'll never find out. Shoppers surged into Apple stores across the world uh, today, no, yesterday as it is now, to buy the new iPhone X or 10. I, th I think you're supposed to say iPhone 10, yeah? Yeah. Um, Signalling stronger demand for the 10th anniversary version of the premium smartphone than the last two iterations, says Reuters. Investors and analysts took the swell of interest as signs that Apple could be the first ever company worth a trillion dollars. And it helps to get to that size, of course, if you have an extremely efficient approach to paying tax. Affirmative. Yes. Which they certainly do. Like all the tech companies, they seem to be able to run rings around all the governments of the world. What they're going to do with all that money, I, have, I really don't have any idea. Buy up anybody that is uh, an impediment to them earning uh, ever more vast amounts of money. Yeah, pretty soon there's going to be one company that does oil and one company that does uh, online sales of anything. Well, I mean, there pretty much is now. That's where we're going. Uh, the glass and steel device, this iPhone 10, that Apple chief executive Tim Cook has billed as the biggest leap forward since the original iPhone, starts at $999 in the U.S., a grand for a phone and can you be heard on the telephone like you can with a landline no no unless they've uh, breached to some sort of uh, technological um, uh, uh, fence then you still won't be able to be heard uh, with that uh, thing I mean, the amount of people that I've talked to are with uh, mobile phones you can't hear a blind word they're saying regardless of how much the blooming phone costs a landline on the other hand you, you can call me from Australia on a landline and it sounds like you're speaking from next door the handset features uh, a screen wow edge to edge display designed for deeper color rendition and an innovative camera that uses facial recognition to unlock and operate the phone. You simply smash your face into the phone and it reads your face print. It's the future, baby! Correct. 250 people are lined up for this thing outside the Apple Store in San Francisco. Similar scenes of excitement, says Reuters, occurred earlier in the day all over Europe and Asia. What for? You people are out of your minds. In Australia, 400 people queued up outside Apple's main store in central Sydney to pay 1,579 Australian dollars. It's beautiful, bro. What a feeling. I'm excited, said uh, builder Bishoy Beeman, 18, after picking up two iPhone 10s as the first in line. He said he camped outside the store for a week 
before paying to improve his place in the queue overnight. <laughs> so that implies that uh, he, uh, th there were people ahead of him in the queue, even though he'd been there for a week. God, uh, uh, what on earth is going on in these people's minds? <laughs> I, uh, that's what I would imagine. In Apple store in Tokyo, 550 people were waiting in a line stretching to around 600 meters to pay a thousand pound for a phone. In um, in Europe, Apple stores in Amsterdam, Berlin, and London saw lines of several hundred fans, while smaller, more subdued crowds were observed in stores in uh, Frankfurt and uh, Paris. Yeah, I, I don't think they'd be uh, into this in uh, Paris. Too sophisticated to get animated by just another disposable phone for the price of a second-hand car. Well, the whole world's gone crazy. You can buy a car for a thousand pounds. That uh, you can you can probably buy my car twice for a thousand pounds. I think the tyres on my car are worth more than my car, and yet it starts up every time and can pro probably drive you around the world and back. Of course, you can't um, uh, listen to music uh, on it because the CD's broken. <clears throat> and you can't make a phone call with a car. That's absolutely true. Chertsey. Oh, Tony. Hi there, Nick. Tony. Nick, hi. I used to be able to make a phone call with my van. What? I used to be able to make a phone call with my van. It had one of those Motorola uh, mobile phones in. And it was brilliant. It had a built-in microphone. You know, so you, you didn't have to worry about hands-free or anything like that. Well, and I have a problem with that. Oh, go on. I don't think that people can, uh, it doesn't really matter what you're doing with your hands, I don't think that people can concentrate on speaking and driving at the same time. I, mm. You know, I've seen enough uh, moronic drivers, uh, one of which I started this program uh, detailing uh, the, uh, the various uh, crimes that uh, he committed against me today. A black cab driver, except it wasn't a black cab, it was grey, but it was, uh -huh. a, you know, a grey black cab. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, tailgating me in a 20 zone and flashing me as I was going through a speed camera he wanted me to speed up. What an yeah. idiot. Yeah. Did you see that episode of Top Gear where... Um, yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> Unless it's the reboot, one. in yeah. which case I didn't. If it was the original oh, right. one, I, th I think I've pretty much seen them all. Go on. Oh, right, right. It was the ones where uh, a caravan got uh, burnt up. Yes. Uh, or it's the one where a caravan got burnt up. And uh, Jeremy Clarkson bought one of those announciator panels um, that, um, you know, you can program. Oh, come up with the, the yeah. Program and, all that. and he put it on the back of the car. Oh, uh, well, and, I, uh, I want rear-mounted rear rocket launchers on the back of my car. <laughs> 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 right, they're in the post, Nick. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll send them uh, to you uh, too sweet. Excellent. But what I was, um, what was thinking about was um, insects. Because I, I noticed, uh, as you uh, no, doubt, no doubt have done, mm. that, um, you know, you go for a long drive. Not that I go for long drives now, but this is on cars that I see that are mostly parked most of the time. Yeah. You know, they just seem to sit outside people's houses. In fact, I, I did a little survey of, of the side roads in and around Chertsey recently, and all of them are full up most of the time with parked cars. Yes. And there's absolutely no space available, only on the uh, the through loop. Uh, and, the, through and there's not an insect on the front of any of them. No, Whereas it, you used to you right. used to be unable to drive through a supermarket car park without getting your front of a uh, the front of your car completely covered <laughs> yeah, in, yeah, uh, right. in insect goo. Yeah, well, I have also noticed because uh, I've been walking along um, uh, riversides and uh, you know tow paths so recently, yeah. and there's still plenty of insects along there. And well, they won't see but by to, plenty, what do you mean by plenty? Well, at least, I've, at least I've seen a few. A few, and they yeah. seem to Be follow you, you know? <laughs> I mean, is it, is it new ones that you're finding, or is it the same one that's rotating around your head, you know? Well, the study and, that uh, came out just uh, uh, a week or so ago w was really alarming, because they did it in Germany and in this country, but they, mm -hmm. but crucially, they were studying areas that were nature reserves. They, they mm -hmm. weren't studying, you know, motorways or uh, urban uh, environments. Nature reserves, which you think would be untouched by a decline yeah. in uh, uh, insect to life, but, but no. they found that seventy, there was a seventy-five percent reduction in the number of insects over about 10 years that's absolutely yeah. incredible i mean that if if yeah. that's not a a, a catastrophe 
Uh, if, if, if that's not beyond the point at which we should do something dramatic, then uh, there's no hope for the human race because we're just going to uh, we're just going to disappear. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Well, also, though, Nick, I have been making some uh, wine recently. Wine which involves pressing grapes. Well, yeah. I mean, it's not ready yet, but it's it's on the way. Why would you and, do a uh, thing like that? Wine is available in shops pre-made. Well, I like doing it myself. I must admit, uh, what you get in shops is much, much better yeah. than uh, what I've done. But uh, this is the, uh, the third year that I've tried it. Uh, you know, you, you sort of learn a bit as you go along. My and, dad uh, used to make that stuff, and it's it smelt... Any good? Awful. Well, I mean, I was a child at the time, so I wasn't actually right. partaking of any of it. <laughs> but he used to... Um, uh, yeah, there used to be b b f like things fermenting and bubbling away in the uh, mm, in, in the ki kitchen. It just used to smell like old socks. Ah. Well, I remember my dad making ginger beer, and that involves a fermenting process, and that was brilliant. And um, I remember he uh, used to mix it on a on a hot summer's day with ice cream. Ah, a float. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I don't know. I don't know. What That's you call what they call it. it. Yeah, a float. Like a. Uh, I, uh, no, no, I didn't ever have one of the ginger beer, but a Coke float. Yeah, a cola I float. Think. Probably right. should say. Well, you know, I don't, I don't have these sort of things nowadays. You know, just too much sugar. Who well, it is. <laughs> yes. Yeah, diabetics should uh, go elsewhere for their sustenance. But yeah, and a <laughs> scoop of ice cream in a glass of Coke. Mmm, uh, mmm, delicious and nutritious. Yeah, yeah. It's an excellent way to start the day. That is the I official know. position of LBC. Right. Nick, I can remember when I had my first, uh, now what was it called? Um, it was sort of fruit and ice cream in a, in a tall glass. Uh, a Tutti Frutti um, or a Sunday. No, no. No, no, no it, was, it was another name. I had it in a Hastings, it was. We went on holiday in Hastings. It was about 10 or so. And uh, oh, I just can't think of the name. Anyway, you have a long spoon. Yeah, which, yeah. Uh, you use to... Uh, um, a Sunday. Oh, Sunday, that's it, yeah. Well, I said Sunday already. <laughs> oh, did you? I didn't hear that. All oh, right, yeah. Oh, I must have been it's not listening to me. Why doesn't anyone listen to me? A Sunday. S-U-N-D-A-E. Yeah, I don't know. I think it was just Sunday. Anyway, uh, also, this thing about insects and making wine. When I uh, press the grapes and sort of leave them lying around before yeah. I dispose of them in some way. How do you press them? With your feet? Uh, no, 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 I've got right. I've um, Well, I, I like the idea of a press, and there are many different types of presses. Um, but um, what I was thinking was, uh, this, uh, this great stuff that's left, left around, within only uh, a few days, uh, you get uh, little flies. You know, so perhaps more and more people should make their own wine. What do you mean and they get little flies? What, in well, them? You, you leave, you, yeah, the little flies start occurring. Uh, on the, um, uh... But they're growing the in it. Well, presumably, yeah. Either well, that, or they uh, come uh, along and... They're, they're not, well, yeah, if they're coming along from outside in order to, uh, you know, suck up the, the juices, that's one thing. But if they're forming in the product, then that's... Well, I, think that's uh, what I would throw it all away, Tony. Oh, no, no, it's all right. I mean, I've already pressed the, uh, the grapes. So I mean, don't throw wine. it down the drain, because, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh probably the sort of industrial waste that people don't want you to uh, dispose of in, in that well, manner. Take it to I a did, recycling facility and they'll know what to do with the hazardous waste okay. of that kind. Yeah. I did actually try a glass of the, uh, oh. the freshly pressed grape juice. Yeah. And it was absolutely Awful? beautiful. Oh, beautiful, no, right. sweet. <laughs> I got that wrong. No, really, really <laughs> nice. You know, I was amazed at just how nice it was. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm no. not convinced. Well, well, I'll, uh, I'll send you a bottle. No, 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 of, uh, no that, that's what I want to avoid at all costs. Please don't <laughs> send me any. <laughs> I appreciate well, your cooperation you. in not sending me any. Okay, I'll uh, tell you what it's like then. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly good. right, yeah. Okay, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll enjoy it um, vicariously through you. Come on, we're running light! Here is uh, Knockholt in Kent. Hello, Anne. Hello. Anne. It's a, it's a knickerbocker glory. Ah. It has the big, long spoon. <laughs> now, what's the difference between a Sunday and a knickerbocker glory? A Sunday has about half the uh, amount. Calories. And, uh, well, my granny's pocket. <laughs> I don't know what that means. She couldn't afford the knickerbocker glory. Oh, I see. 
<laughs> you mean what was in her pocket, as in money-wise? <laughs> exactly. Right. And uh, the, the Sunday is a shallow dish, sort of boat shaped. Ah, uh, well, a banana. That, no, that's a banana split. Ah, no, you can have a banana split in a similar size dish. My husband's favourite was banana split. Yeah. With, with extra nuts. With <laughs> cream and uh, yes. chocolate sauce on the top. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Only in my case, I preferred uh, raspberry, raspberry or ripple. strawberry yeah. syrup. Right. It was a ripple, wasn't it? Oh, raspberry ripple. Yeah. No, you buy you buy that in a block. And uh, you cut it off and you put it between wafer biscuits. Ah. So you've got a raspberry ripple ice cream sandwich. Yeah, they they never worked, though, did they? No. Because the, the, the first time you bit into it, it would all uh, pop it out the other end and, uh, uh, and uh, land on your shoes. <laughs> oh, no, not if you sat up to the table. I was a good girl, <laughs> I was. <laughs> You're not allowed to eat standing up, even if it's ice cream. <laughs> on a hot day, you had to go and sit, by, sit at the table. You'll sit there till you've finished. Yes. Yes. A Knickerbocker Glory. That sounds like the sort of thing that they used to... Um, I'm pretty sure they used to sell those in uh, Wimpy. Remember Wimpy? Uh, I remember Wimpy, but I'm talking about years before that because i am rather old yeah well <laughs> and this was in the winter gardens in western supermare well that sounds um uh, that sounds uh, uh, uh um glamorous it sounds like a glamorous destination oh yes they had tea dances and uh gran because everybody knew her could manage to get a table that looked over the balcony and you're all, and hop you're the all, all hopped up on uh, cake and darjeeling <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> gentlemen and ladies doing a waltz or a quick step after or stuffing yourself with cake and tea then you go dancing that's, that's i don't know that's, that just doesn't seem well i don't like a good combination <laughs> well you needed some energy it was wartime well I, oh okay <laughs> now that's really old, isn't it? Uh, that is getting on a bit, yeah. Well, All right. I did graduate to actually making Knickerbocker Glories uh, quite a few years later when I was a student. So you're an expert? Well, I wouldn't say that, but it was great fun. Well, what's in a Knickerbocker Glory then? Ice cream, cream, that's it? No, no, no. You start with fruit. Um, strawberries, if they're... Uh, in season, not the abroad ones, uh, or raspberries. <laughs> not the and then abroad ones. <laughs> pear, orange, tangerine. Orange? Yes. Oh, you, no. You have bits of anything. No, no, no. Well, okay, I'll no. say to the waiter, please hold the hold orange. Hold the orange, yeah. Mm. Because, yes. the, I don't know, too, it's too acidic. Yes. You don't want something too acidic with ice cream because it just doesn't work. Strawberries, I'm, I'm with you up and down on strawberries and okay. any kind of berries, as a matter of fact. But yes. I think you've gone too far okay. when you um, right. with we'll that leave, whole orange we'll thing. Leave the citrus. Yeah, and we'll have cream, um, partly soaked <laughs> pears and apples. That would actually so work. Yeah, soaked in what though? Booze. Uh, either fruit juice. No. Or brandy. If they noticed what age you are. Yeah, brandy. It might have been or sherry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then cream. Clotted cream from Somerset. Oh wow! You've just turned it up to eleven and clotted cream. <laughs> now you're talking. And oh, a big yes. long spoon. Yes, a yeah. very long spoon. And a um, and you do need a straw because it will get a bit. Uh, you know, once it starts to melt, that's the good part. I like that part the best. <laughs> oh, there is also strawberry jelly in it, or raspberry Ugh. jelly. No. No, no jelly for you. No. Hold the jelly okay. and the citrus. Hold the jelly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for uh, wandering us uh, down uh, memory lane there, uh, Anne, and um, I appreciate it. Cheers, my dear. You must know about the spoon, Nick. What about the spoon? It's a special shape. Yeah, it's long. The bowl, not only has it a long handle, but the bowl comes to almost a point so it should oh, get well, the yeah. last little exactly right, yeah. at, out of the dimple uh, out of in the, the, the dimple in the, the bottom yeah. glass. I know, it sounds awful <laughs> disgusting, getting the last little bit out of the dimple in the bottom but uh, yeah, everything is above board, don't you worry about that alright, thanks a lot Anne I'm starving now but where, where can you get a knickerbocker glory at this time of night?